Donate Aspire is a great tool for developing distributed applications. With it, we can define our environment entirely in code. We can specify how services talk to each other, leverage things like service discovery so that we can find those different HTTP endpoints, those databases we deployed, and things like that without having to know their hosts, their IPs, and things like that. But when it comes to writing integration tests against a distributed application, well, that can be a little bit more difficult. How do you make sure all your services are up and running? Your database is there, your various web applications, they're all running and know how to find each other. Well, let's take a look at the testing features of .NET Aspire and see what we can do to leverage that aspect in our development environment to make our testing easier for end-to-end -end integration testing. Here I am in Visual Studio. I've gone ahead and created a Aspire Starter Kit application using the template available with inside of Visual Studio that is scaffolding me up an API service, which has a HTTP endpoint for getting back weather forecast information. We have a Blazor front-end application, and also we have our .NET Aspire, our post. Inside of here, we have our API service that's being named API service. We're capturing that and then providing it as a dependency to our web front-end so that the web front-end can com communicate with that using service discovery. Let's just start this application up and have a look at what it does and think about the kinds of integration tests we might want to write in it. So here in the Aspire dashboard, we can see that we have our web front end that's up and running. And we could come to say the default route here and make sure that that returns a 200 OK, that we do actually start our web application successfully. Another thing we might want to do is look at the endpoints for our API service and call our weather forecast. Maybe we want to check to make sure that the data has come back successfully. If we were seeding out a database, we want to assert that that data has been read back as it was from the database. Now, this is using randomized data, so maybe we won't test the actual structures of the data, but instead we should check to make sure that we got five records back, which is what we're getting back inside of this test. So let's come across and create a new test project with inside of the solution. Here, I can use the search feature to search for Aspire tests projects, and you'll see that there are a couple of different options. We've got MS test, which is the one that I'm going to use in this example, but you could also use NUnit or XUnit if those are your more preferred testing frameworks. So we're just going to click through next and then create this new test project that appears within inside of our solution. If we have a look at the CS project file, we'll notice that it's imported the Aspire hosting testing NuGet package. Now this package is going to start the Aspire app host, and it's going to run that in the background but provide us with some APIs to make it a little bit easier to work with it in an integration test experience. The other thing that it has done with this test project is it scaffolded out a starter test for us. Excellent. So we can easily start our first test. But how do we know what to start? Well, if we let's uncomment this test and just have a look at it for a moment. Now, what we'll see here is we're using a distributed application testing builder, which is a type that's been brought in from that Aspire hosting testing NuGet package. What we're doing with it is we're saying we want to create asynchronously a test host builder. But to do that, I need to tell it, where is my app host? And for that, I need to add a reference for the app host project into my test. So I'm just going to drag it down. With that added, I can come into here and then do dot, and we'll see that I have app host available. It's also detected the other CS projects, the CS project files, or the, the other um, projects that are in here. But I want to make sure I provide it with the app host because that's what's defining the Aspire orchestration for us. This is going to give us back our I distributed application testing builder. And from that, I'm capable of doing things with it to modify it for the way our integration test environment will actually work. Something that I like to do is make sure that I include the standard resilience handler on HTTP client because we're going to use the HTTP client that the uh, app host gives us to work with those Aspire services. So I'm going to add those in there so that I get that resilience layer inside of my test, which is also what I would have in the way that I'm actually running my integration and my application through the browser. After that's all set up, I can then build a distributed application, which is the same distributed application type that I get from running the .NET Aspire app host and I would build that inside of the test that we can then start working with it. I'm going to, I can access the services that are available from this app host 
to get things such as the notification service, the resource notification service. I'll come back and talk about why we need that in a little moment. But first, I want to start my Aspire outpost. This is going to launch Aspire behind the scenes in my test. It's going to run in the background. So all those services that I've defined in my program and my program for CS for Aspire are going to get started up. If I had containers or anything like that, those would also get started up for me. Then, whether that's started up, I can use the HTTP client to perform web requests. But how do I know what host and port my web front end is running on? Well, because this is running a .NET Aspire project behind the scenes, I can use service discovery for that. All I have to do is I have to give it the name of the service I want a HTTP client for, web front end in this case, which we'll see is the same as the one I had inside of my app host here, web front end. And as a result of that, I create that and I don't have to know about any of the ports or hosts or anything like that. Next, we're going to use the resource notification service to wait for the web front end to be started. Now, this could be important because it might take a few moments for the projects that we're wanting to launch or the services to be ready for us to communicate with. So we want to make sure that we're not trying to access them before they're ready. So the resource notification service will wait until that service reports that it's in a ready state. So I'm going to say the known, sir, the known state is now running. I can provide it with a various other states that an um, Aspire project could go in or a Aspire managed service could go into, but I'll wait for this one to become running. And I'm also saying only wait for 30 seconds. If it doesn't achieve a running state within inside of 30 seconds, my test is going to fail because I'm considering that as too long a startup time for this particular project. It's the kind of thing you might want to test out what is going to be the right time out that you need inside of your own projects based off of the complexity of the Aspire environment that you're standing up. Lastly, we're on to actually executing a test. In this case, I'm going to use the HTTP client to access the default route or the root of our web application and assert that that is going to return a 200 OK response. So let's come over to our test explorer here and we'll expand this out and we'll see here it is. I can click run test on that and in hopefully a moment or so, that test will be completed and it will be successfully completed as that, at that. There we go. That was pretty quick. Now, I have a fairly simple environment here, but obviously the more complex environment you have, the longer it may take to run each individual test. We can see here we've got the output logging from Aspire, so we can actually have a look at any log messages that might have been given from those services that we've got running. Excellent. That's testing our web front end. But how about we write a test for our API? I want to assert that the weather forecast is going to give us back five records. Like I said, this is using randomized data, so I can't really assert that the data is in the correct shape. So I'm just going to assert the number of records. But if this was talking to a database, for example, you could assert that the records in the database are the ones that are actually getting returned by that endpoint. So I'm going to create a new test method in here. We'll make this an async test method. And we'll give this the name of uh, weather forecast endpoint returns five, five records. Okay. Now, a lot of this test is going to be similar to how we orchestrated the first one. We're going to need to create the same app host. We're going to need to add the same resilience handlers. And we probably want to start it up and get the resource notification service. So let's just copy that and paste it into this new test. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the we're going to want to get the HTTP client. So we'll get a HTTP client and not for the web front end. This time we want the API service. Uh, we also want to wait for the resource notification service to say that that is in a running state. Thanks, Copilot, for figuring out that's what I needed. And then we're going to call the weather forecast endpoint there and get the response back. Now it's time for us to create some assert statements. First, let's assert that does, does return a 200 OK response. Bail out early if it doesn't. Next, let's deserialize that from the JSON payload. And then finally, we'll assert that we got a length of five. I'm going to need a using statement for the uh, JSON deserializer. So system.net.http.json. JSON, there we are. And I also need to give it the type that I want to deserialize, which is going to be weather forecast. Now, 
If we have a look at the weather forecast type that's defined in here, we'll see that that record, well, it's a private meth record inside of that file. So I'm just going to copy and paste it into the test because, like I said, I'm not really interested in the shape. I just want to make sure it deserializes correctly as that. Uh, so we can just kind of uh, leave it and sort of ignore it there and not make it a public type outside of our project. Now, because the deserialization might not be successful, might return a nullable, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to put, uh, the, the tell it that if it's null, well, that's going to result in a failing test rather than, um, uh, so it will check in 5 es null rather than throwing a null reference exception. Now, if we save that and let's come back to our test explorer, let's run this new test and see if that test also passes successfully. Now, this time we're going to start up all of our services again, but we're going to hit a different endpoint. And we'll see that that has returned successful again. Excellent. That's our two tests written so far for the environment that we want to work with. Wow, how easy was that? With only a few lines of code, we're able to run the entire distributed application with inside of a test. We started up our outpost, we're able to talk to the web service and run that full integration end-to-end -end style testing that we we're hoping to achieve. If you want to see more of these videos, give us a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you can stay informed when we have more videos about how we can do testing with .NET Aspire. See you next time.